almost everyone experiences ringing in the ears without external sound at some point in their life. This phantom sensation is called tinnitus and is usually only temporary. In 5 to 15% of the general population, however, the ringing becomes permanent, and while tinnitus is not fatal, it can severely affect quality of life, causing effects like sleep disturbance, work impairment, and concentration difficulties. As of yet, there are no permanent treatment options for tinnitus, only management strategies, which are not always effective. A new treatment option for tinnitus is therefore required. In a normal hearing person, sound arrives at the ear as a pressure wave, where it is converted into an electrical signal. This electrical signal travels up the auditory pathway, through the brainstem, from the auditory nerve all the way to the auditory cortex, and we perceive the sound. In a person with chronic tinnitus, however, the brain receives sound information even though no sound is being presented at the ear. Usually caused by noise damage, the exact neural circuitry that causes tinnitus is not yet fully understood. One popular theory is that when damaged cells in the ear no longer receive sound input, baseline activity in cells upstream, in the dorsal part of the cochlear nucleus, is increased, even though it is normally inhibited. All neural cells have a baseline activity, which is usually negligible, but in this case the baseline activity is high enough to be detected as actual sound. Recent studies have found that the dorsal cochlear nucleus also receives input from the trigeminal nerve, a nerve mainly responsible for sensation in the face and mouth, and that combined sound and trigeminal stimulation could decrease the baseline activity and sound responses of these cells. In this study, we attempt to find evidence for this phenomenon in humans by simultaneously presenting sound to the ear and electrical stimulation to the tongue. Tongue stimulation is performed with a custom-made stimulation device, and by measuring the auditory brainstem response before and after stimulation, we can objectively assess the effects of combined sound and electrical stimulation. As current tinnitus assessment methods are very subjective, mostly in the form of questionnaires filled out by patients, use of the auditory brainstem response could provide an objective assessment for tinnitus intensity and treatment effectiveness. Confirmation of this multisensory integration in humans could pave the way to new and innovative tinnitus treatment options, helping millions of people.